page 3 of our exam for fall 2011, exam 1. Question 5 is about comparing two different food plans. We're looking at a summary of the distribution of daily food plan costs for 100 residents that are in building A and another 100 residents that live in building B. These are the various plans in terms of their cost. So 30 of the residents in building A had a $5 a day meal plan and then 20 out of the 100 residents that live in building B selected the $25 a day meal plan. We also have a note here that the questions we're about to answer should be able to be answered without any computations. The two questions we're asked to look at is comparing building A versus building B in terms of the average daily cost and in terms of the standard deviation. So I'm going to make a quick little sketch that will help me visually see these answers quite readily. So I'm going to quickly sketch for building A and for building B using the $5 increments and seeing that I've got 30, 15, 10, 15, 30. So it's high on the ends at 30, less coming in and fewer in the middle. That's for building A. And for building B, the distribution is a little different. It's got 20 on the ends nobody in the next level, and 60 in the middle. So it's very high in the middle, somewhat on the ends, but nobody here in those middle sections there. So here's our two distri differ distri different distributions. And I can readily see from the visual and from the numbers that they are both symmetric. Symmetric around the middle value, which happens to be at the $15 here. And so the average daily cost is going to be the same at $15. The averages are equal because of the symmetry of our two distri different distributions. But in terms of the spread, we see some differences. Standard deviation is supposed to look at how far away the values are from the mean on average. How far away are the values from the mean on average? Looking at building B, the average is 15, and that's where most of the values are. And they contribute a zero to this sort of average distance idea. There are 20 values that are kind of extreme in terms of being farther away, but 60 of the values are right at the mean, contributing a zero. 20 values are contributing the maximum distance here, and 20 above, but on our building A distribution, very few are right at the mean. In fact, the highest counts are for those two values that are the furthest away from the mean, contributing a large distance, and a lot of them, so their weights are more. And another group are a bit further out from the mean, too. So the standard deviation for building A is going to be much larger, greater than that for building B the average distance of the values from the mean in building A is larger than the average distance of the values from, building, from the mean for building B because most are at the mean here and not very many are far away whereas most are far away from the mean in building A and very few are right at the mean. All right, that's question five. Let's take a look at question six, cold season. So here we live in close quarters. This is a partial distribution for the number of colds that a college student will have in an academic year. We see a partial distribution. There's some values that are missing, and we're told that a student is twice as likely to get four colds, twice as likely to be in this last cell, as they are to get no colds. So I'm looking at the probabilities I've got for these middle and these add up to, what, 30, 55, 65, 70% is accounted for here in the middle. That leaves 30% left over. And the 30% left over has to go into these two categories with twice as many here in the four versus here. So we need to break that up into sort of a two to one ratio. Well, that's pretty easy with 30%. That means I've got a 20% and a 10%. 
So twice as likely for colds compared to no colds. And now as a check, my distribution does add up to 100%. It is a legitimate probability distribution. We're now going to summarize this distribution by reporting on average how many colds students can expect to get in a given year. Their expected value or mean. We're supposed to write the correct symbol, provide the actual value, and don't forget the units and showing your work. This distribution is not symmetric, so I can't readily see it. It's not going to be the value of 2. I will have to compute it, and I'm asking for the expected value or the mean. So these are the two symbols I could use. Either one of those would be given full credit to use as the symbol. The computation of it is to take each value that's possible, 0 through 4, but make sure you give the appropriate weight for how often you're going to see that value in your population of college students. So each value gets its corresponding probability weight to work out the right mean or average. So taking each value times its corresponding probability and adding those up will give me the overall expected value. That calculation, with the calculator work a little bit of help, should end up being 2.35 because there's a little bit more on the 3 side than there is down here in the 1. So a little bit between 2 and 3. And I'm going to keep it as that 2.35. I'm not going to round it down to 2 or up to 3, because this is what you'd expect on average over many college students. And the units, I don't want to forget and lose that point on my exam. So we're talking about 2.35 colds on average. And now we've got a particular college student, Jane. She's already had one cold in September and another one in October, so she's had two colds already. We know that she is already in this part of the distribution right there, but the year is not over yet. We know that Jane could end up being in any part of this section of our distribution, that she wouldn't end up having zero or one colds because she's already on her second cold. Knowing this information about Jane, knowing the fact that she's going to have either two colds or more, maybe three or four, we want to find the probability that she'll actually just get one more cold before the end of the year. So knowing she's in this part of the distribution, which is 30, 50, 60, 75 percent out of the 75 percent of the distribution we're going to even consider looking at as our base, how likely is it that she'll end up being at the three colds, which represented by 30%. And 30 out of the 75 ends up being 0.4. The more complicated probability we did just find is the chance that her value of x is going to be equal to 3, given we knew that she actually had a value of x that would be at least 2. It could be 2 or more. And so that's finding the 3 which is the intersection between these two events over the base, which is the two or more. So logically, knowing we're in this part of the distribution from two or more, which is 75%, how likely is it she'll actually end up being in that 30% category for three colds? 40%. So our final answer can be the 0.4, or if you wrote it with percent, make sure you put the percent sign after.